All right, hey guys, Scott here again with my next live trading video. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd. And for this video here, I'll be showing you guys how I personally have been using stock to defend my short put option trades in this crazy bear market. And even though my technique is a little bit complex, I will definitely do my best to be as detailed and thorough as possible here. But the cool thing though, is defending your short put options in this way quite literally gives you the potential to still make money even if you are super dead wrong on the direction of the stock. Right, for example, you could be bullish on some stock and sell some put options, then the stock could drop by 30% or 40% and you could still walk away with some money in your pocket. And to demonstrate all this and how it works, I'm going to place a brand new trade this morning, specifically selling some put options here on Occidental Petroleum or Oxy. So this company here is involved in the gas and energy space. I'm definitely very bullish on this whole uh, sector in general, given the inflationary environment that we're in right now. And as you'll see here, I do think right now is a very good time to get long on the stock by you know selling some put options and playing for a short term bounce. Now, briefly here before we get started, I've got a very cool limited time opportunity for you guys where you can receive up to 10 free stocks where each stock could be worth up to 2,500 bucks. So basically there is a newer brokerage company out there called Moomoo, which is based in Palo Alto, California. And again, for a limited time, they are offering you to receive up to 10 free stocks when you sign up for a brokerage account with Moomoo using my link in the description of this video. And so the Moomoo trading platform is very competitive with other comparable platforms like Webull and Robinhood. There are absolutely no trading fees on stock or option trades. You also get direct trading access to US, Hong Kong, and Chinese markets, which is something I have not seen being offered by competing platforms. Moomoo also comes with a free, very advanced, yet totally user-friendly trading platform that you can install on your computer or your smartphone. And of course, everything is regulated by the SEC and FINRA, so your investments and your trades are properly insured. And so if all that sounds interesting to you guys, then again, use my link in the description of this video to sign up and get your free stocks. And lastly here, in case any of you are brand new to the channel, again, my name is Scott, and you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very detailed classes on options trading or stock market investing. And you'll also find some links to a few of my introductory courses in the description of this video as well. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. All right, so now focusing here on the Oxy charts and we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit there. And so as you can see here in white, I've gone ahead and drawn in a support level right around 54 bucks per share or so. Obviously it's not super clean as you can see back here. There were a few times where Oxy managed to get below this price level a few times. But ultimately here in the grand scheme of things, I would say somewhere around 54 bucks per share has been a pretty significant support level for this stock. And now once again, in very recent times, we've seen Oxy come down pretty much every single day in a row and finally reach that support level once again here. So based on what I'm seeing here with the charts and also I personally am bullish on energy stocks and energy prices because of the major inflationary environment that we're in right now. So I think currently is a pretty good uh, time to place a bullish trade on Oxy here. And then additionally, if we come down and take a look at the implied volatility chart for Oxy, as you can see right now, the actual IV level is just under 70%, which is pretty darn high, even for an individual stock. And also, if we compare the current IV to the recent past here, it's obviously not at the highest level it's been in the past uh, 12 months here or so. But especially given this pretty significant uh, sell-off here that Oxy has underwent in the past couple of weeks, we have seen a pretty nice expansion of the implied volatility as a result. Right again, keep in mind that when stocks sell off in pretty significant ways, you almost always see a large expansion of implied volatility and therefore an expansion of option prices. So ultimately with an IV at around 70%, we're seeing an IV rank of 46%, that's I would say okay, but also we're seeing an IV percentile of 88%, which is still very, very good. So again, even though the implied volatility for Oxy is definitely not at the highest point that it has been in the recent past, but still even right now at around 70%, this is still very, very good, very high for Oxy. And so everything looks good here for a potential uh, short put option trade. And also as you can see here, Oxy is so far respecting the support level uh, this morning here, which is a good sign. But again, because this level is not super clear, right? Again, there were a few days in the past where Oxy did get below this point. I definitely wanna make sure my short put strikes are below uh, the lows of all these candles right here. So. That means my guess is I'm probably gonna pick a strike at around 50 bucks per share and give myself a lot of cushion in case Oxy does uh, continue to move lower here. So with that said, we'll come over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain here. Uh, for this trade, I'll be in the July monthly cycle, 23 days left to go. 
And again, as I said here, I'll probably go ahead with the 50 strike put options. And so now at this point, I'll go ahead and click on the bid price here to bring up a sell order down below. And because Oxy is only about 55 bucks per share, I'm gonna sell two contracts here, two contracts of the 50 strike put options, and I'll try and do so for about 155 bucks each. Let's try that. Then we'll go to confirm and send, check the buying power effect for this trade. It's only about uh, 1200 bucks, which is still well under 5% of this account here. So that's good. My position sizing here is in check. So lastly, we'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 156, awesome. And then the next step here is to create my closing order for this trade to basically take my profits automatically. So now we'll go ahead and click on the asking price here to bring up a buy order down below. Gonna buy back both contracts. And as usual, I'll try and do so for half price, half my starting credit. So half of 156 is 78, lock in that price. Then I'll make this a GTC order, so this is always in place, and confirm and send, and send this one as well. Awesome, so now I'm officially in my Oxy trade here, and of course the whole point is, directionally speaking, I want Oxy to rise in price off that support level, so if that happens, I do expect to see also the implied volatility for Oxy to come down. That's also gonna help reduce the value of these put options here, and then lastly, of course, there's always time decay working in your favor uh, as an option seller as well. So of course the ideal scenario is if all three of those things can work in my favor, then I should be out of this trade for a profit very, very quickly here. Now also I do wanna dive a bit deeper in how I'm going to manage this trade or basically defend it if things go wrong and Oxy decides to drop a lot more in price, perhaps uh, below my put strike here. And the way I'm going to defend the trade if that does happen is I will short 200 shares of the stock once or if it falls below my 50 strike put. Right, because doing so, basically by shorting shares of stock, that totally covers my obligations on the put options if, again, Oxy falls a lot by expiration and I do end up getting assigned on these put contracts. Right, so for example here, let's say over the course of the next three weeks until expiration, Oxy decides to fall in price and once it falls below 50 bucks here, at around that point, I'm gonna short 200 shares of stock, right? 100 shares per contract. And then let's say by expiration, Oxy is at perhaps 45 bucks per share. And so of course, because my put options will be in the money at that point, I'll get assigned on these contracts and therefore I'll have to purchase 200 shares of stock at a price of 50 bucks per share. So therefore, if I now pull up the calculator here to make this a bit more uh, easy to understand. So if in my example here, I had to buy 200 shares of stock at a price of 50 bucks per share, and then if I did not want to keep those shares, if I just wanted to sell them and get rid of them, I would have to do so at the market price by expiration, which in our example is only 45 bucks per share. So of course that would mean I would lose $5 per share times 200 shares. That's a total loss of $1,000. And then of course the last step here is I do also get to keep the premium I sold these put options for today, which was 156 per contract or times two. That's 312 bucks, so that means at the very end of things, if I now add 312 here, that means my final loss in this example is $688. That's not very good. But now using my approach of shorting stock once it falls below my put strike, this loss here is actually going to get converted into a profit. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen here. So again, if over the course of this trade, Oxy does fall down below my put strike here of 50 bucks per share at that price at 50, I'm going to short the full amount of shares, 200 in total. And then if by expiration, Oxy is down to 45 bucks per share and I get assigned on my put options here, well, at that point, same thing, I will have to buy 200 shares of stock at the exact same price or roughly the exact same price that I shorted these shares at to begin with. And so in the end, if I shorted at 50, and then I had to buy the shares back at 50, that means the net effect is neither a loss or a profit, at least on the stock. But again, I still do get to keep the full 312 bucks of premium I collected when I sold these put options today. And that is my final profit here in this case. And so this exact method here is how I've been managing my short put option trades during this crazy bear market of 2022. And for the most part, it has worked very, very well. I've had multiple trades, for example, in Boeing, uh, United Airlines, AMD, NVIDIA, et cetera, where I sold short put options on those stocks and the stocks just plummeted by a lot more, went through my put strike. And because I shorted the stock right when that happened, right when the uh, stocks fell below my put strike, I converted all those trades into full profits. 
And so next up here, I'm gonna show you guys the exact orders I use to short and buy back the stock automatically. So, you know, I don't have to be just glued to my screen 24 seven and watch the stock tick by tick. But at the same time, as you can see through this um, example here, this also is not a risk-free approach or strategy either. Right, so even though defending your short put option trades in this way does give you the potential to still profit, even if you are super directionally incorrect on the trade, it does not guarantee a profit because as you'll see here in a second, there is one situation where you could actually still face a loss. And so now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the price of Oxy here and go to sell custom. I do have some specific uh, custom templates that I use to, again, short and buy back the stock if need be. And so now I'll go down to the N through S section here, and then you can see right there, Oxy short. I'll click on that. And so now what you're seeing down here is basically a chain reaction of orders that will repeatedly short and buy back the stock depending on the price of Oxy stock. And I do also have a separate video that will show you guys exactly how all this works and how to set up this kind of order. I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it later. But essentially all these orders will execute just one after another. And so the first one here is a short selling order to short 200 shares of Oxy stock at some price that I can specify here. So again, given that my put strike is at 50 bucks per share, then perhaps I want to short the shares of stock if Oxy falls down to perhaps $49.50. And you'll see why in a moment that I picked that price. So now coming down here, I'll change my stop price to 49.50. So basically my stop price here is the price at which this order will now become active and then try to short the shares of stock. And then for the limit price here, I'll change that to perhaps 49 flat. And this price here is the lowest price that I'm willing to short these shares at. And so great at this point, if Oxy does fall down to 49.50, at that point, my order here will get executed. I'll short 200 shares of stock and I'll be totally covered if Oxy continues to move lower after that point. Now the situation though, where I could actually still face some losses on this kind of trade is if Oxy does continue to bounce through my put strike again and again and again, right? Because basically the way this works is every time Oxy falls below my put strike, I short the shares of stock, but if Oxy recovers and goes back above my strike, well, at that point, I do have to buy back my shares of stock, remove this uh, stock hedge, if you will, and take a small loss. Right, so again, once this first order gets executed, if it ever does, then the next order will become active, or basically it will be next in line to get executed. And so this buy order to buy back my 200 shares of stock will basically cut my losses if Oxy does actually recover back above my put strike. So therefore my stop price for this order, I'll set that to 50 bucks flat. And then for my limit price, I'll change that to, let's say 50, 50. So now this means, again, if Oxy falls down to 49.50, I'll short the stock, 200 shares. But then if Oxy bounces back above 50, I will buy the shares back automatically here. And therefore I would take a loss of 50 cents per share here, which times 200 shares is a loss of 100 bucks. Now losing 100 bucks, if this happens, is not a big deal because again, my starting credit on this trade, my total credit is 362. So I can definitely afford to possibly lose 100 bucks from this happening or 200 bucks or even 300 bucks. So again, with this trade as is, Oxy could bounce through my strike three times and I could still possibly make a small profit by the expiration date. And so again, with this entire order here, it's basically just going to flip flop back and forth between shorting and buying back the stock again and again and again at these exact same prices, right? Basically, I just have to input these prices for the rest of these orders down here and then send the whole thing. And oops, actually one thing I do have to change is because this is a short selling order first and because for some reason you cannot have GTC short selling orders, that means I have to change all these to simple uh, day orders. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And there we go. So now each one of these orders is a simple day order, which also means that these will expire at the end of each day. And that also means that each morning I will have to recreate this whole thing from scratch, but because I use an order template, it's obviously not too bad. It just takes a few seconds really. And so lastly here, let me go ahead and fill out the prices for the rest of these orders real quick. And there we go. So now each one of these orders here has the exact same prices all the way through. So finally here, I just have to go to confirm and send and send the whole thing, all done. And then lastly here, I do wanna to touch a bit more on the possibility of Oxy bouncing through my put strike many, many times and losing money as a result. So basically if that happens too many times and I do end up losing my starting credit as a result, at that point, I will have to make an adjustment to this trade to take in even more credit. And the way I will do that is simply by selling out of the money call options against my existing puts. 
So for example, because I'm short two put options with a 50 strike, I could match that with two call options, maybe with a 64 strike here. And right now I could sell these contracts for about 100 bucks a piece. So times two contracts, that would be about 200 bucks of additional credit that I could collect with this adjustment. And then to collect even more credit, if need be, I can repeatedly roll down my call options again and again. And every time I roll them down, I'll collect even more credit. Now the main caveat by doing this though, is because I now have call options, or I would have call options on this trade in this example, that means I do have to be cautious about Oxy going above my short call strikes. So in this case, if I did sell two call options with a 64 strike, then if Oxy went above 64 here, then at around that point, I would have to purchase 200 shares of stock, right? Because that would basically convert my naked call options here into cover call options. And to do that, I would simply create the exact same chain, uh, chain reaction of orders that you saw a moment ago, except the first order would not be a short selling order. It would actually just be a buy order. That's it. But obviously right now my oxy trade is totally fine although i do have those automatic orders in place already such that if oxy does decide to fall in price a lot and fall below 50 then those orders there will automatically take care of shorting and buying back the stock multiple times which means my only job is to simply monitor things and if i do run out of those orders i'll create a whole new set a whole new chain reaction and then of course make adjustments if i do end up needing to do so but obviously, even though I do love trading, I don't want to be glued to my screen here and glued to my charts all day. So trying to automate your trading as much as possible is something that I definitely think is worthwhile. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want up to 10 free stocks with Moomoo, then again, use my link in the description below and sign up to get your free stocks. And also, if you do have an interest in taking some detailed classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links also in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.